Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome to a very special video on the channel. Today, rather than EVE Online or EVE Echoes, we're going to be talking about a brand new game, EVE Vanguard. And if you've clicked on this video, I'm sure you already have at least a passing understanding of what Vanguard is. What I want to do in today's video, because I was on the ground there at FanFest 2023, what an experience, getting to meet so many awesome people in this community, getting to meet the developers, having Helmar himself come up to me, recognize me by name and introduce himself to me, was fantastic, like genuinely mind-bogglingly awesome, and that's on top of all the other stuff. If you've been following my channel, you'll have seen all the shorts and videos that I was putting out. Anyway, Vanguard, something I've wanted to talk about since the keynote, um, just to talk about what this looks like. Now, I spent a decent amount of time talking to folks like CCP Shortfall and CCP Delarge. People have been working on this project for a while now. Just to ask some questions about what was said in the keynote. Essentially, I'm going to go through the keynote with you all now, and we're going to talk about what this all actually means. I'm going to try and put some context onto some of the bits, answer some of the questions I saw a lot of people have asked me in the community, and on the keynote stream, I saw a lot of questions being asked. Just going to cover those points. This is going to be fairly hectic and heavy, so we're not going to spend a long time on this intro. As such, if you do enjoy this, please hit like, drop a comment down below. Both really help the channel out. Obviously, I've got my PayPal, my Patreon, and my Redbubble merchandise store if you want to go the extra mile. Otherwise, let's just jump right in on this one because there's a lot to cover. Which makes us proud to announce our next steps towards the ultimate science fiction, Eve Vanguard. Oh yeah, oh yeah, very, very exciting. The audience was, yeah. A modular first person shooter experience for and within EVE Online. So I'm gonna pause that briefly there. For and in EVE Online, what does that actually mean? Is this a separate game? Is it inside the EVE client? Like, is it Project Discovery? sort of thing, where you have to open up EVE Online and then go in from there. No. It's going to be tied to your EVE Online account, yes, but it's going to be a separate download. So, like, you can download EVE Online and Vanguard, you can download just Vanguard, you can download just EVE Online, depending. And it's launched through the same EVE launcher that we've been using. If you've been using the beta launcher, you'll have probably seen that there is a lot of space on there for a lot of additional growth. And one of those bits of growth is going to be Vanguard. It's heavily connected to EVE Online. Things that you do in Vanguard will affect EVE Online. Things you do in EVE Online will affect Vanguard. They are part of the same universe, but you access them via the same front end, but then a different door within that launcher, if that makes sense. <clears throat> Excuse me. With dynamic multiplayer gameplay that will evolve over time, and unique sandbox game mechanics, content, and connections. We've learned a lot on this journey, and we... Just going to pause there as well, because one thing that I think a lot of people have commented on on the stream and on my own content <clears throat> is that, yeah, but Dust514 failed, so I've got zero faith in this. And I think people give CCP such a hard time on all this kind of stuff. Like, they've been running this game for 20 years. You don't get a game to 20 years old without doing something right, you know? And yeah, they've done a lot wrong over the years, but I like to think they've learnt from that. And Dust 514 was not a failure. It was a PS3 exclusive game at a time when the PS4 was being pushed. Yeah, sure. But it also did last for three years. It was financially viable. It was probably ahead of its time. And it did all of that despite the fact that it was a PS3 console exclusive set in the universe of a game that is entirely PC exclusive. Like you were asking PlayStation 3 and PC gamers to, you know, you were asking the PC gamers and Eve who wanted to be part of it to go out and buy a PS3 or people who wanted, Van uh, wanted Dust and to be part of EVE Online to have to go out and buy a gaming computer. There was no crossover there. It was all crossover in game, no crossover in our world. <clears throat> So Dust did astonishingly well for the time that it was, despite a lot of bad decisions. And CCP have clearly learned from that because this is going to be basically PC exclusive to start with, though having spoken to Shortfall and to Large, um, there's a lot of talk about it obviously coming to next gen consoles, at least to Xbox, because of how easy it is to program for Xbox if you're making for PC already. But Again, all up in the air. Everything I say, everything that I t talk to them about, this is a game that is in early alpha, 
It's all subject to change, right? So take that right now. Everything is subject to change. We've applied those learnings, and now we're finally in a position to share more. 20 years of making mistakes, so, but learning from it them. It seems like the Deathless have been keeping busy in Sarsak. By reverse engineering, Jovian clone blanks stockpiled in the depths of the station, the Deathless have managed to create a new generation of war clones, the Vanguard. Pirate corruption will be an interesting vector into the already well-established frontline advantage. So if you do sort of faction warfare, you'll already know what frontline advantage is, that sort of tug of war that goes on between the Kaldari and the uh, Galenta, or the Mimitar and the Amar. We're not going to go too heavily into this, because it's more about EVE Online's mechanics, and we're here to talk about Vanguard, but it's worth spending a brief moment to talk about what corruption and uh, suppression is. The way they described this is that if the whole advantage thing is a tug of war between the two empires, then corruption and suppression are a race between Concord and the pirates. So if you're doing Galente Kaldari, you're going to have Gurustus pirates. If you're doing Minmatara Ma, you're going to have Angel Cartel. Essentially, whilst the usual faction warfare stuff is going on, and there's all that tug of war going on, there's also going to be a race for the pirates to generate corruption, and for the empire forces to generate suppression. These, as you generate those, there are certain ways in which you can generate it, you know, a limited way at first, but the more suppression or corruption you have, the more options spawn in system to allow you to generate more of it. And it's a race to who can get to five points or five tiers or whatever first in that system. And increasing those tiers not only increases the content available to the pirates or to the uh, Empire forces, but also increases various different system effects within there as well. So you get bonuses and negatives and things like that that are going to change based on the level of corruption and based on the level of suppression. This is also something that will roll out across the entirety of New Eden. If you go to somewhere like Venal or Curse that are pirate controlled, they're going to have a higher base corruption to start with, whereas Empire Space is going to have higher suppression to start with. And some systems, like say Jita, will have very high suppression just naturally, because an not be able to switch and shift and things like that because it is just empire space this whole gameplay thing of corruption and suppression these pirate incursions can happen anywhere up to 0.8 level security and from the mechanics of how those work and how they showed us to those that can actually spread over a big area so vanguard being able to play around with corruption in a system is really quite powerful and does have big implications for the rest of eve the deathless goal does not seem to evolve around dominance, but much rather to create chaos and create distrust in the establishment. <laughs> While developing Vanguard, this has been our mantra. One game, one community, one team. Now, technically, it is two teams because there's a separate team developing Vanguard right now. Um, it is technically two games because Vanguard and EVE Online, you know, they're two entities you can download just one or both or neither but the the, the ethic behind this the, the sort of feeling behind this one game one community one team is because it's all integrated it's one game it affects backward and forward it's one community you're not vanguard players and eve online players you are eve players you are affecting each other it looks like you can be part of the same corporation and alliance you can actually recruit vanguard players people who just play vanguard can be part of your corporation and eve online that kind of thing and it's one team yeah it's a different team doing things like you have obviously a financial team and you have art teams and that in eve online but it's all part of that EVE team. They are working very, very closely together to create one experience. And we foresee that alliances will recruit Vanguard there to go. wreak havoc and assort their dominance in New Eden. Alliances can recruit Vanguard. Vanguard is connected to EVE Online from day one. Woohoo! When you get your hands on the FPS, you'll be able to impact EVE directly through frontline corruption. Economically, it will be a new habitat in New Eden. It's unclear as to how the economics are going to be affected by this, because we've seen that essentially altering systems and playing Vanguard will increase corruption. 
Therefore, that is going to make it easier for pirate players to complete their goals and uh, you know, corrupt more systems. And as they corrupt systems, the pirate incursions can actually spread really quite far. This can therefore cause like a spiraling effect, although it does have self-balancing mechanics, where players are therefore able to access a lot more pirate-based LP, getting blueprints for the new ships and stuff like that. So I guess that's where the economics come into play here, in that you are able to effectively increase the possibility for other players in EVE Online to access more content and access bigger and better rewards, that kind of thing. Just like Wormholes, Pochvin, with its own rules, its own resources, and unique mechanics. But it's not a new system, it's not a new... Uh, it's it's not a new area to go to like Pochven. I, I guess other than Zarzak, it's just a new a new gameplay system that's been hooked in and therefore will affect the world around it, which is kind of cool. How you utilize those will be in your hands. As we evolve the future of war, your generals, your officers will have bigger forces to command, bolder strategies, and daring tactics. So if you're allied with the pirates, for example, in EVE Online, and you hire a lot of vanguards into your corporation, um, yeah, you can actually work side by side and go, right, well, you guys this system, will be in space supporting you from there. That appears to be an actual thing, as we'll see later. Industrialists, enforcers, soldiers of fortune, and explorers all have a role to play in vanguard. All have a role to play in vanguard. This means that there are going to be things in EVE Online that explorers, industrialists, enforcers, and soldiers of fortune can all do in order to impact Vanguard. It's hinted at later that destroying ships in system may cause them to crash land onto the planets for the Vanguards to access. It's entirely possible that explorers or industrialists could do things like supply drops or picking up resources from the planet's surface. It might be that explorers are the ones who help you evac from a planet's surface, that kind of thing. There's a lot of really interesting implications for this, and whilst a lot of this is purely theoretical at this point in time, again, this is early alpha, there are some really seriously cool ideas being tabled around all this. Participating in the cycle of creation and destruction, contribution and friendship. The four we online. know and understand the risks of the connection. We are in full control, down to individual player interactions. With EVE Vanguard, we're committed to delivering an authentic new Eden FPS with everything that you expect from a game set in the EVE universe. Literally. And it looks and plays absolutely amazing. It does. Look at it. Look at it. This is truly what it feels to be human scale on the planets of New Eden. Unreal Engine 5 is insane. It's still in development, but we want to see more. So, please welcome CCP Joker, followed by CCP Collins from the Vanguard team. It's been over a decade, but once again players will join the fight and leave their footprints on the worlds of New Eden. When we say, as above, so below, we mean it. We're not reimagining Eve, we are Eve. That's a huge concept for this. They're making sure that everything is completely integrated and everything is working side by side. Our creative vision has been 20 years in the making. It has its own history, culture and politics driven by you, the community. And respecting this legacy is a responsibility we take very seriously. EVE is famous for its epic scale and translating its look and feel to a human perspective has been an exciting challenge for the team. Just remember how big some of these ships are. Even just look at the size of something like a slasher. These are frigates, yet in human terms, they are very large things. And by the time you get up to some of the capitals and that, yo. We're putting you in the heart of the action, not as a drone camera, but experiencing New Eden through the eyes of a new type of clone warrior. Players will fight on real worlds within New Eden of strategic value to the Deathless, and to ensure we deliver an authentic experience, the new and the old must coexist. Fan favourites from Dust like Devol's GK and the Scrambler Rifle will return alongside next generation weapons and equipment from well known manufacturers such as Creodron and Core. There's some really interesting stuff here if you pause and read through all of this. Um, this reminds me a lot of the Frigates of Eve Online book, and it's the amount of detail they've gone into on this kind of stuff as well. Every gun is part of the universe. It's not just, you know, a gun. It's a gun that's made by one of the developers as we know them in EVE Online, like Core Complexion, Carnid Innovation, Devol Laboratories, that kind of thing. 
I'm not sure who this one at the top right is, but there's a lot of really interesting implications going on with this, and we'll see more of this later, and I'll talk about more of this later. But one of the big things that I'm kind of looking forward to is the concept of damage types being translated from EVE Online into, uh, into Vanguard here. We see later on one, uh, the Duvall uh, GK, GK80 using both kinetic and electromagnetic ammo. There's nothing to say we won't get explosive and thermal, and I would possibly suggest that certain weapons actually have different options. Not every weapon can get all four damage types, for example. So an Amarian weapon might specialise in electromagnetic and thermal, whereas a Minmatar weapon would, ex would specialise in explosive, that kind of thing. Maybe that's a thing. We don't know. I can just theorise from looking at some of the stuff here, and I think that could be an interesting way of doing things. We're building on strong foundations and learning from what has gone before. Dust, Valkyrie and Nova have all left their mark. Games that people refer to as failures, which I just don't see. Again, Dust lasted for three and a half years, despite all of the issues around it. They were things that developers have learned from and now have that opportunity to go back and readdress them, bring them up to scratch with newer technologies and, you know, much more advancements in the gaming scene, basically. Friendships were forged and battles waged by their communities and just like Eve, they have played a crucial role in the very real history of New Eden. We're incredibly proud to be joining Eve as it begins this new chapter. And now I'll hand you over to CCP Collins, who'll give you your first look at Eve Vanguard. Nice long pause for applause there. There was quite a lot of Hello. that fest. I do like Eve Collins. Vanguard, come on! Yeah. All yeah. right. A big thank you, thank you to you, of course, and a big thank you to CCP Joker there for, uh, well, we are, as if you can tell, breathless already. Breathless and deathless. And look, I, again, I saw a lot of comments saying that, like, uh, CCP Collins here was cringe up on straight and stage and that. You know what, when you're in the audience at this event and they're getting the crowd pumped like this, it worked. The, the atmosphere in that stage room, in that auditorium, was absolutely electric insanely excited to be able to reveal Eve Vanguard for you here today, but you thought we were done with Eve Vanguard. We are not. Who here would like to see some gameplay? Like this, it's a little cringe, but it was great. Come on, come on, who would like to see some gameplay? People were standing up and cheering okay. at this point. Now, we're gonna do things a bit differently though. We're gonna take it up a notch. We're not just gonna show you a video. What do you think they've been sitting there? We're going to run you some gameplay live on stage. There's been a bit of a running joke since this that CCP Shortfall is a bot. Um, I don't know why, why that's a thing. Um, I did ask him about it and apparently it's something to do with the fact that he has a mic switch under the table. But when you, you know, you could clearly see it was him playing. Like us watching, you could see on the screens they had cameras on the devs themselves. The keystrokes and the, the mouse controls absolutely are in sync and yes it's a scripted event like you'll see here that uh, ccp collins is clearly reading a script and therefore the three devs playing the game here in Reykjavik, they know where they need to be at the right time to do the thing to match the script and there is the team in london the ccp london team who do jump in and during this as well they know where they need to be in order to fit the script as well it's a scripted event it's not automated it is live footage they were playing the game and doing the thing and just it looks so good for that so let's see to help me with this please welcome to the stage ccp shortfall ccp Ezra and CCP Paragon. Shortfall, if you're watching this, it was a pleasure to meet you. You were a great laugh. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Okay, so, what, oh, there we go. <laughs> what you're gonna be seeing here today is still early in development. It's pre-alpha gameplay. You're gonna see some prototypes. You're gonna see some placeholder, but everything that you're gonna see running is running on those machines right there. It's a build. And with some help from the London team across the water, who we may very well bump into as our Vanguard squad carry out their objective. Right, we have the feed. Shortfall. How you doing? We ready? Leverage is ever be. All right, let's go. Okay, so here we're seeing the perspective of CCP Shortfall. Shortfall here as a Vanguard, a player, an Infomorph, who has taken host of a ready clone. 
looking at this as well, let's just talk about this UI for a second because I'm in love with this. So at the top of the screen here, when my mouse starts working, we have our usual compass ticker. Nice and standard, 227, not entirely sure what this means here, probably distance to an objective or something, but we don't have an objective just yet, more on that later. You've got your health UI here, so we've got shields. These do regenerate over time. You've got your health here as well, 100 out of 100, um, and biomass. Now, biomass we'll talk about more later. Essentially, it's used in healing and respawning mechanics. We have ammo here with an ammo switcher because we can swap between different types of ammunition as we'll see later. This is the heal mechanic here and with the biomass there so you'll consume biomass to heal yourself up and you can gather this from other NPCs and players. Down here though we have crafting and equipment and this excites me. There's a lot of scope of what you can do with this as we'll talk as we go. So it looks like our vanguard have dropped down in these pods here and we're about to go off and start up a contract. And alongside their squad mates can carry out their goals with gun in hand and boots on the ground. There we have a contract popping up on the left hand side and I've been told that some of these will be automated, that they'll just appear and everyone who is currently live on that map will get that contract and some of them will be selected. So like having a contract log that you can open and choose which mission you and your team want to accept. Some of these will be directly in the center of the map and will be very aggressive. Some of them will be around the edges of the arena to allow sort of newer or less comfortable players to sort of still do something lower rewards, lower risk or centralized high reward, high risk, that kind of thing. And I love that as a mechanic. I think, obviously, as well, if you're going to have these automated contracts pop up, those are probably going to be the sudden death kind of, this has just happened, first team to get there is going to do it, and you're going to have everyone rush and get a big combat scenario going forward. There's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with this as well. The ability to choose your own objectives, and yeah, we'll talk about that in a bit as well, because there's more on that, but it, it just excites me. For this squad, they've Love taken on a contract. They need to find and reclaim the Nexus chip from a, gr a group of Garista pirates that have been located. Have a look at this bit here as well. The kinetic ammunition, the counter there of 30 out of 800 rounds total, 30 rounds currently loaded, and there's our damage. We've got a kinetic symbol and we've got an electromagnetic symbol. This implies there will be thermal and explosive at some point. Doesn't look like there's enough space for all four though here down the side, which is why I anticipate that no weapon is going to have all four damage available to it. Or if it does, it's going to be like one rare and not very powerful weapon or something. And therefore different guns are going to have different rates of fire, different statistics, and also the different options for ammo types. It's why I suggest that like here we have a Devol GK80 that can use kinetic and EM. I imagine we'll get some rail guns in here that can only use electromagnetic, sorry, can only use thermal and kinetic. We might get some Minmatar weapons that have explosive, kinetic and thermal, that kind of thing. And probably certain guns have different, uh, 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 like, stats to them. Like, some might be better with kinetic than they are with electromagnetic and so on, but we'll see. That's, that's purely me theory crafting. I did ask about this um, and was given sort of very vague answers. Nearby. I do love how these tickers as well, if you watch these, they actually move with the gun. They're not just part of a static thing on the overlay. They do actually wobble and move alongside the gun. Think you could take in the scenery a bit for us, Shortfall? Look how beautiful that is. Seriously, yeah, beautiful. UE5. Beautiful destruction. <laughs> in the aftermath of an attack on a fleet of bowhead ships, they've recently crash landed on the surface. So it's Wreckage crashed bowhead. strewn throughout the already hostile environment. This means it is potentially rife with opportunists looting through the wreckage. See anything up ahead? Okay, we've friends. spotted... If you look really closely here, right next to the dot on the HUD, you can also see that enemies do highlight when you're looking down sights. Um, it appears to be red for like hostile, green for friendly, blue if they have high resistance to what you're currently loaded with. You've got an ammo counter there, so I've said Devol, it's a core AT, uh, ATAR, sorry, not a, it's a core complexion, um, is the, the gun we're looking at. 108 meters to wherever the point is at there, so we've got a range finder. I really like this. It's clean, it's easily readable, and it gives you that sort of nice, 
it, it's something I, I missed in Apex Legends that they did in Apex Mobile, and um, that like with the they did it in Apex Legends with the, with one of the upgrades. I'm trying to remember what it's called, the digital threat, where when you look down sights, enemies are lit up red so that you can see them easier. I really like that for readability, and in a sci-fi game like this, it really makes sense. And you'll see the blue and the green later on as well. I will try and pause to showcase that. Some NPC guards scouting through the partial remains of the crashed ship. NPCs? Highlighted in red here through the AR sights of our Core 80 assault rifle. Vanguard is a PvP VE game. So as well as other online players, NPC AI enemies will also be found throughout the environment with their own goals and purposes. So far, so much Eve, right? Because you're sitting here with a situation where you can go up against NPCs if you want, but you can also PvP if you want. You can do a beautiful mix of both. And I've been told that some of the, uh, the different contracts will revolve around that as well. Some of them will be purely PvE, some of them, well, I say purely PvE, some of them will be PvE objectives that obviously you're going to have other players contesting with you for and maybe just trying to stop you doing because this is even people just like to shoot at each other. Killing is just a means of communication after all. Um, but also having PvP-centric ones as well, killing other Vanguard members. You as the player though, have agency over the level of aggression that you attract. So shortfall, I think we should uh, find a different route maybe. Let's go for a walk. As well as enemies littered throughout the environment, the landscape itself poses danger. Here, a hazardous sulfur swamp stands in the way. I don't think you're best equipped for this one, Shortfall. I don't think you're best equipped for this one, Shortfall. And we've got equipment at the bottom left, so perhaps you can craft hazard suits, and that gives some real kind of agency as well. You can spend time looting and then come to a place like this and go, oh, I could spend some of those resources to cross this, or I could just spend health to cross this and deal with it that way, or we can find another way around. You have options. And uh, I don't think it's worth taking the damage early on. Let's head back. Yeah, I don't want to go for a swim, to be honest with you. <laughs> In EVE Vanguard, success and failure is player-driven where players deploy onto these expansive and hostile environments to carry out their goals for their gain in whichever way they feel is effective. Be it a 10 minute excursion for resources or an hour long hunt for kills and equipment, we provide the tools for your success, not define the rules. So again, we're going very Eve here. It's very much about the players and how they choose to approach the scenarios and the situations. Notice as well, it is designed to allow you a short hop into the game or a long duration. I really like that in games that you don't have to sit and play for hours at a time to feel like you've achieved anything, but you can be rewarded for doing so. Ready to engage? Send it. So much better at FPSs than I am. I suck. All right, Shortfall's first kills on stage. Quite a bit of damage taken, but he survived. Oh, a, re a reminder, Shortfall, heal up. So you can harvest biomass. Fallen enemies can provide useful resources here, such as biomass, which can be used to heal your clone's wounds. You Notice here as well, the biomass indicator in the bottom right is currently sort of gray when it's 50 or above, and there is a line on the, uh, on the biomass bar here. I have a theory about this later. You can utilize Biomass 2 to increase the options of lengthening your stay on the surface for yourself and your squad mates. Notice now that it's gone below 50, the Biomass is now red. This to me says that if you die, because you can lengthen your stay on the environment, if you die, you can spend probably 50 Biomass, at this point at least, to respawn as like a new clone, maybe just you know, pull yourself back up from dead. I don't know if that's going to be another drop down or whether you can sort of use it as an emergency, just pull yourself up off the floor for the full 50 biomass. I don't know how that will work, but there definitely seems to be some delineation here between anything above, and equal to above or below 50 biomass. And they mention lengthening your stay. Let's push on. I will say as well, Let's just for a matter of balance, because again, I don't want to just come across like, oh, I love everything about this. The loot containers I wish were lit up a little bit more. I'm not talking Apex Legends beacons in the sky sort of thing, but just having the lights be a little bit more poppy. Like as you look around the environment here, 
there's a lot of glow, a lot of fire and flames from the destruction of this bowhead, and it can be very difficult when you're watching this footage to spot what is a loot container and what is just ground, and I hope they improve the readability on that a little bit. The environment can be hostile, it can also be plentiful. Spilled cargo from the wreckage can be looted for resources. Like that. There's nothing to show there that that is a loot container. It's not particularly visual that you can loot this thing. Providing such things as materials that can come in handy later down the line. The same with this box here on the left hand side. To the point that he kind of just swung past it there. Here, shortfall is... And you may have noticed if I jump back a little, as we go past this other one here, it's got a little bit of a light on the side of it, but it's not particularly standout. Here, Shortfall is elegantly scouting through the wreckage of one of our crashed out colossal bowhead ships. Shot down from orbit, its cloning chamber within has ruptured, spilling wreckage, blank clone bodies, and cryofluid all throughout the landscape around. There is so much detail Whilst in this Whilst still early in development here, I hope you can see the great care we've taken to make the atmosphere of E-Vanguard feel like it's already a part of New Eden. I love that you can really see it to bowhead as well from the shape of the parts. That up ahead, that's the Garista Pirates. Notice that they're blue this time, which means they are resistant to the damage type that you have loaded. And we're about to see some even, you know, even better readability on this. I love readability in games. So the fact that enemies light up red when you're ADS at them, um, and then blue when you ADS at them if they're resistant to what you're using, I really like that, and you'll see green come up for friendlies as well in a moment. Through our AR sights, we can see them highlighted in blue, having a stronger resistance to kinetic ammo. Fortunately, that's the ammo type we currently have loaded into our Core 80 at the moment. Shortfall's made the good call here to peel back and tool up for a slightly different approach to this. Crafting. So we have crafting cues. Here you can see he's making some energy rounds. They take 15 seconds to make and cost 20 nanites and 30 energy for 90 rounds. That's three clips worth. You can see above this, kinetic rounds, you only get 60 per clip. Only uses 10 energy though and 20 nanites. We also have a deployable shield, which I imagine is the kind of thing you can chuck on the floor and it will just put like a little barrier in front of you. And a signal beacon as well, which we'll see later. At the very bottom, there is a GK-13 burst rifle. GK, is it GK? Yeah, GK. Not off the top of my head, I'm trying to think what GK could stand for. Um, but it is what it is there. That one's locked off. Notice at the top we also have nanites that you can make directly using Veldspar. Notably Veldspar. And at the very bottom of this list as well, next to where the kinetic uh, round counter is, Tritanium. This to me suggests you're actually going to be able to mine in Vanguard. And what would an EVE game be if it didn't have mining in it, right? So I don't know, maybe, uh, I'm, having just played a bit of Starfield, maybe there's some kind of personal uh, like mining laser and there are going to be certain resources that you can actually mine to get those as well. I don't know, maybe there are going to be entire contracts to go down onto a planet's surface and just mine for resources, so you can actually play a miner in Vanguard. That'd be really quite cool. This fight. <laughs> With materials and resources gained during the fight, from enemy salvage and more, you can generate the tools to help you adapt to varying obstacles that block your path. Shortfall and the squad here have uh, printed some energy ammo, which should help them take down enemies with strong kinetic resistances. I've also just noticed, it's just been flashing out the corner of the eye, this icon here, again, once we're in the red with this, this is not there, and that to me looks like it could be a person respawning. Just more evidence for that, I think. With Core 80, it's easy enough to load in different ammo types, changing the characteristics of the weapon on the fly. And I love Shortfall, the readability. Load up. Look at the readability on this. Kinetic was yellow, EM is blue. Quick glance and you can tell what you've got loaded. Also check out the actual graphics of the different shots. So as he comes around here, you'll see he hits the wall a couple of times when shooting. Look at the bullet holes. I love it. I love this detail. There. It, the EM ammo actually sort of sparks and leaves those lightning burns on it. Ah, oh, brilliant. Small the detail. The here were hiding out within the hull of the ship's cloning chamber, it would seem. This could be a useful spot to remember for another time. Grim. But for now, we've got more important things. We still haven't found that Nexus chip that the Gristas were holding onto. 
It's gone back to kinetic. See, the gun's now yellow again. Even in this lighting, you can easily read what you've got loaded. That's a lot of damage there. Shortfall was not alone. It Heal appears up. another Vanguard unit had picked up the contract for the Nexus chip as well. Other player Vanguard squads and units are present on this battlefield. There it was. I'm going to scroll back a second. Well. Other player Vanguard squads and units are present on this battlefield. Notice how it's lit up green there when it's a uh, friendly player. Um, yes, other Vanguard squads can intercept you, which means if they have, say, the same uh, contract of getting that Gursa Strike Team Nexus chip, if you've already got it and they kill you, they can loot you and just steal your loot. Because... This is Eve, right? That's that's how this works. And at any time are exfiltrating and deploying down through the session with their own dip set of goals. Which made for anyone kill you that for knows fun. CCP short for well, and I heard a few cheers in the crowd, you know he doesn't like sharing. So he's <laughs> gonna, I imagine he's gonna want the rewards for that Nexus chip himself and his squad mates if they agree to get out of this together. That sentence and his, uh, he wants to keep the rewards for himself and his squad mates if they agree to get out of this together. That stuck with me when I was in the audience watching this bit of the presentation. I wondered, what the hell does that mean? And so I asked. Friendly fire is on. That means at the end of a mission, you can theoretically have a Mexican standoff where one person tries to get out with all of the loot abandoning the others. Because this is EVE Online, and that's how it works, right? <laughs> I love the audio on this as well. Oh, please heal up, shortfall. That's making me itchy. A slight detour, but that's the Nexus chip acquired. Big hand to sort shortfall, maybe? <laughs> Another Vanguard squad ad tried to scupper the plans, but that's the asset obtained. With lesser resources now, though, and an asset that we might not want to risk losing, shortfall, let's try and find a safe space to get off this rock. Yeah, let's not do that again. <laughs> So yeah, there you are. You can steal from other players and just complete the objectives that way. And again, worth pointing out, this is clearly a scripted event. Like, uh, Colin, CCP Collins here, is clearly reading from a script. And uh, the team, we're uh, led by Shortfall, obviously know where they need to be at what time. And uh, CC, uh, the CCP London team clearly know where they need to be to intercept. And they're making sure that they follow sort of that playbook. It's still a live gameplay demonstration. It's just kind of been scripted to make sure that they showcase everything they can do. I like this mechanic as well. The squad have placed down an evac beacon, which if they can hold down and defend for a period of time, will allow them to exfil from the surface and earn their rewards. It is, however, quite noticeable. So the squad will have to be vigilant for any opportunists looking to disrupt. I love how many people have commented on that bit of footage saying, oh, it's awful, look at the tearing going on, they couldn't even get it a straight line. It's early alpha footage, people. Seriously, cut some slack. That's, you know, this still looks utterly incredible. Now, interestingly enough, one of the things that someone did suggest to me is they mentioned earlier on about uh, explorers and industrialists and that being able to help. How cool would it be if... if when one of these beacons goes up, you have to defend it long enough for a player to actually come along in something like a cheater or a buzzard or whatever and actually extract you from the planet's surface manually. That would be cool. Oh dear, shortfall. Should have healed. Ah. Uh, boo. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now, this bit doesn't feel like it's actually game footage at this point, but it does give some kind of cool concepts. And boom. No. That's basically the entire demonstration, but there's one little bit I want to go forward to because, oh God, it's awful, but brilliant. Not quite good enough from Shortfall there, uh, who seem to have fallen short of... 
shortfall fallen short. In fact, you can see shortfall on stage giving that same goal. Completing golf clap. this particular objective. Oh, thank you, thank you. Terrible joke. <laughs> Terrible joke, but we love it. They got caught out by a rival Vanguard squad just as they were about to exfil from the surface. But death is not the end for the Vanguard. They are relentless and they have more opportunities and the tools necessary to carry on the fight. That to me suggests that the whole biomass thing, that yeah, you can just kind of uh, regen, come back and keep going. You are a clone soldier after all. You are basically a capsuleer to a lesser degree, you know, without all the ship augmentations. You're a clone that can jump into and out of that body and needle jack out and in. And that's so cool. Anyway, that does bring us to the end of everything there. I am going to say now, I spoke to the devs a lot. I've tried to remember everything that I could. I made a lot of notes um, during all of these chats and conversations. I may have missed some parts, so if you do have any questions about Eve Vanguard, drop them into the comment section down below. I'll see if there's something I've missed and I can, you know, mention down there. I am super hype about this, and that's coming from someone who is not at all particularly good at first-person shooters. In fact, I actively suck at first-person shooters. I am still super hype for this because of how it integrates into Eve and just how much fun it looks. The fact that it looks like basically an Eve first-person shooter. That's really cool to me. I don't know. I don't know, I'm hoping you guys are excited as I am. When I get my hands on this, which I think it's December they're talking about as like a, a, a an alpha test or something, yeah, I will be covering this as much as I'm allowed to, obviously, give or take NDAs or whatever they get to sign when it comes around to that, but I'm hype. I am super hype about this, and I hope you folks are too. Come join the Cat's Guard Community Discord. I will see if I can open up a Vanguard channel there as well that we can talk about this in the EVE community. I'm keen. I'm keen. I'd love to hear what you are excited about in regards to this as well in the comments. Let me know what you're looking at going, oh, that looks really cool, or yeah, whichever. Let me know. Anyway, folks, ask your questions. Tell me how you feel. Otherwise, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden. <laughs>